Hey everyone, so I wanted to do a TTC video for you guys, um, for any of you who are trying to get pregnant, or just any of you who are trying to be healthier and have a healthier lifestyle. So I have 10 tips, 8 are specifically for women, however, men can also do this too, except for number 1 and number 5. Um, so I'm going to go through this kind of quick, um, and not really go into a lot of detail, but if it's something that needs more detail, um, I will do a separate video on it. So the first one is prenatal vitamins or just plain folic acid. You want to increase your folic acid before you get pregnant um, for two reasons. For one, it helps prevent neural two defects in your child um, once you are pregnant. Um, but if you increase it before, it even more decreases your likelihood of having a child with neural tube defects. Uh, number two is agave nectar. Um, this is just really good in general for changing your lifestyle. You don't have as, you don't have that blood sugar spike, like especially if you're uh, diabetic or if you have any insulin issues. Um, this stuff is really good. Your body metabolizes it a lot slower than sugar, so your body's not working as hard as it needs to. So you have a more relaxed body, um, which does increase your fertility. The next thing is bananas. The extra potassium in bananas is shown to help increase your chances of getting pregnant. Fun fact is it also is supposed to um, increase your chance of having a boy. So, well, I guess it's not a fact. It's just an interesting tidbit, I guess. Um, the next thing is teas. And I have three here that are supposed to be really good for you. Um, well, two that are supposed to be really good for you and one that I just really prefer. So the first one is green tea. Um, they say having an antioxidant as you're trying to get pregnant is really good in increasing your chances of fertility because you're helping flush out all those bad toxins and again it's helping you have a healthier, more relaxed body. So that's really good. Um, red raspberry leaf nettle tea. Um, I have this one. It's not just plain red raspberry leaf nettle. Um, it does have hibiscus, rose, hips, apples, elderberries, and along with the raspberry leaf tea, it's natural and artificial raspberry flavor. Um, I just really like this, not only to add flavor, but also get the benefits from the red raspberry um, leaf, which helps promote um, a healthy lining in the uterus, which, as you all know, helps a healthy baby attach. Um, the red raspberry leaf also helps with menstrual symptoms and, um, I was going to say something else any infertility issues you have just because it does help promote health. So the next thing that I have, especially just for me, um, I, it's not technically a fertility tea, I guess, but this is a chamomile with lemon. This is organic chamomile with lemon tea. This is really good for me is I have those two teas during the day mixed together into my tumbler, which I have right now. Um, and then I have chamomile tea at night because it does help relax and rejuvenate my body while I'm sleeping. And it helps me sleep longer because I tend to have insomnia at night, which has been really bad, but this has helped me um, in general. So the next thing I don't have with me, it's actually in my bathroom and it's almost gone. I'm going to have to get more. Um, but for me, I have um, estrogen dominance. So I have to use a progesterone cream if I would like to get pregnant. Um, they also have progesterone suppositories, but I am way not interested in that. Nothing is supposed to go up, so no. Um, so I use the cream, and you put it on the um, sensitive pregnancy portions, like the thin skin areas, like um, your stomach, your breasts, your arms. You can put them on your hips, your lower back. Um, yeah, so that's supposed to be really good for you. And for me, it helped me conceive our daughter. So for me, that's important for me to have. So I'm actually on my fourth tube of it. It's really expensive stuff. Um, this, the particular brand I use is Happy PMS Cream. Um, I don't remember where I got it. Anyway, um, it's like two ounces for like 20 bucks. So it's really expensive. I went through three bottles of Earth three little tubes of that with Lex, because I did have it through the 36 weeks of my pregnancy. However, I did have issues, you know, being pregnant. I wasn't as healthy as I could have been. Um, 
I wasn't taking care of myself as I should have been. So this time is a lot different, but I still need the progesterone cream in order to get pregnant. Um, number six is increasing your calcium intake. It's kind of an obvious one. You want strong bones. You want to have that extra calcium. However, with me, I can't have too much extra calcium because I get little calcium uh, nodules on my wrists. Um, and particularly, I only get it like right here. And I, the only way to get rid of them for me is I have to kind of shatter that extra calcium ball, um, which hurts. Yes, I end up being bruised and it looks really bad. My husband actually watched me um, get rid of one before. So I really have to watch my calcium intake, but I also have to increase it from what it normally has been. So it's kind of like a balancing act for me with calcium. Um, number seven is exercise. Exercise in general is just really good. You're going to release any extra toxins in your body through sweat. Yes, women sweat, and we can't be afraid of it. <laughs> um, so exercise is just really good, and it helps you just have a healthier body. Um, number eight, water. Increase your water intake. Now, for me, when I was pregnant with Lex, this was the hardest thing for me to do. Um, so I'd have to carry around my water bottle, and the funniest thing that I can remember is when I was pregnant with Lex, I had literally the most water per day um, than I had throughout the rest of my pregnancy the day my water broke. So I don't know, I don't know if that could have contributed to it, I don't know, because I did have probably a good two to three gallons of water that day, and yeah, so... Increase your water intake, which I am still trying to do, but I'm working slowly towards it. And it has to have lemon in it. Like, I don't know why I have to have my water have lemon or strawberry in it, or I won't drink it. And it has to be freezing cold, so. Um, and then these two are in particular to men. Um, number nine is for the man to wear less constricting undergarments. Um, because you don't... <laughs> going to be kind of graphic, I guess, but you don't want um, really tight fabric up against the man's testicles because it can um, inhibit the semen uh, from not only moving, but it kind of slows them down a bit because they are constricted in there. Um, yeah, so less constricting undergarments. And just an FYI, most men these days do wear boxer briefs. Um, which is actually the best underwear they can have. Um, boxers are horrible too. You don't want too much airflow and you don't want them just tangling down. Oh god, this is going to be a weird video. Uh, number 10 is no hot tubbing. Um, again, it decreases your fertility, um, for the man because they're so hot. They're just like baking in there and it's going to slow them down. And obviously when you're trying to get pregnant, you do not want slow sperm. Okay, so those are my top 10 tips. This is a really long video, I know, and I said I was going to go through this quick, but it was as quick as I could get it. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and let me know, and I will do another video for you guys on TTCing. Bye.